not sure what to say. I call the meeting to order at <laughs> 5.35 p.m. Libby, take it away. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Chair. Um, so we have a few members of the public on. I believe the board's purpose for this meeting was to hear from community members um, and it's wide open and I see three or four community members on here um, in addition to the board. So you all have our boards and myself um, here. Grant Geisler, our business manager is also on the call. Um, so if you're a community member, this is pretty low key with so little people here or so few people here. So um, by all means, unmute yourself and speak up <laughs> unless one of the board members wants to do this a different way. No, that's fine. I think um, if we if we are struggling to pull folks out, then I could certainly go over some of the things we heard from the survey to see if that elicits any reactions from folks. But um, I see a head nodding. I can say from my side, that's the most exciting part, I, you know, how much that interest that gathered and what the responses were. Um, you know, I'm a community member, live in Montpelier, but I don't have kids in the school system. So I think it's really interesting to see what priorities parents have, um, you know, over somebody like me who's just interested. Thank you. Great. Thank you. I wonder if there's a way that we could show some of the the bigger bucket responses. I mean, what I what I went through and sort of summarized was the um, the commentary. So there were there were the first main part of the survey was a, a rating scale of some of the priorities. I think there were probably about ten different sort of high level um, buckets of information, and folks were asked to rank those by priority. Um, and then there was also sort of a free form. Uh, response of things that maybe hadn't been addressed in one of the um, one of those categories that folks wanted to make sure that we addressed. Um, so I don't know if we can show that. I have a question. Have a question. The, the the email said that this was a uh, a budget um, town meeting. Is that not right? A budget town hall. More for the board to gather community input to, towards the budget. So we will be, the district will be presenting our initial budget to the school board at the December 2nd meeting. Um, and that's where Grant Geisler and myself and the principals and administrators will be showing a PowerPoint of where um, we believe we'd like to put some money towards or where, where we are right now and what our ed spending and that kind of thing is projected to be. That presentation will be be repeated multiple times um, to the board and the community as we our numbers firm up more. Um, but this the board part of the board's responsibility is to gather community input into the budget, um, and this is this is part of the way that they are satisfying that. Thank you, Jill. Would you like to? Sure. And is the survey closed? Is that right? Or we could we could open it back up, I suppose, if there was demand. So um, some of the, the main priority items that folks were asked to weigh in on and rank included uh, classroom instruction, foreign language, art education, special education, early childhood education, outdoor education, social emotional well-being of students, improvement to facilities, diversity, equity, and inclusion, food services, career center and tech ed, college prep programs, and co-curricular and athletics. And I think in both the, um, the responses and then also in the free form, it certainly seems like the social, emotional, um, and mental health support for students is definitely one of the things that folks want to make sure we, we focus on, and also diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, and then the, the free form responses that folks got were, they were able to be a little bit more in depth. So um, there were questions about the pandemic response and ventilation, which I do think as a board we could, we could um, address and talk about, because I know that that's certainly been at the forefront of the facility folks um, in our business office. Um, there was an expansion on requests for things like music, art, theater, and foreign language at different grade levels. 
Um, then there's some specific things like driver's education capacity, textbook and book, books in the library, um, after school programs, um, seeking more assist um, AP advanced placement classes. Um, there were some additional comments about facilities um, and prioritizing the most disadvantaged students and families in our district to make sure we're putting our resources where they're needed the most. And there was um, significant input on requesting that we not fund the school resource officer position, but rather redirect those funds to the social, emotional, um, and mental health uh, supports for students, especially in light of the pandemic. Um, so I don't think any of those things are surprises, but certainly there was a pretty wide variety of, of answers there that um, in keeping with what I think we as a board have spent a lot of time talking about. But I'm wondering if any of those things prompt any of the folks on the call. If you have any additional things you want to expand on or things you didn't hear in any of those that you think you want to make sure that, that we have on a radar screen, I think this is the time to, to bring those things up. I have a comment. Cara Robichek. Um, so Libby, I know, is already aware of this, but um, there is an opportunity coming up because there's going to be a new bus service in this city. Um, it's called My Ride by GMT. It was being called Microtransit, but now it's being called a flexible service, flexible schedule, um, or flexible it's the end of the day. I'll come up with the words later. But um, it is an opportunity that we could see additional busing for high school and middle school students at a very low cost. So I just want to make sure that that's being considered. Excellent. Thank you. I had not heard that. Are, are there other uh, community people who are not on the board uh, on the call? Can, can we identify? Yep, it looks like we have five. We have Cameron, Kara, Peter, Chad, and Kelly. I'm happy to jump in. This is Chad Simmons, uh, community member. Uh, my daughter is a kindergartner at UES. Um, I think I'd just like to say, first off, uh, thank you for putting the survey out and this opportunity uh, for community members to weigh in. Um, I think this is great that we have multiple ways for, for folks to plug in. Um, I think just in general, um, I want to support a lot of the things. It was actually really tough for me to, to um, prioritize those. So I, I, I think I chose a lot of four and fives um, on that list. So um, I would echo a lot of what's been said in terms of the, um, <clears throat> the written, uh, place for written um, ideas in terms of mental health, social services, uh, diversity, inclusion, equity, um, to continually invest in those as a school board uh, in part of our school budget, and then encourage continual and ongoing learning in those areas, uh, ways we can always improve, I think. Obviously, the, the pandemic is giving us um, um, a, a big opportunity to reflect on our um, role in the school districts and the school board's role in social emotional well being. Um, so, I think just looking at investing uh, in the long term for those, uh, including staff, would be wonderful. I don't think I have anything else to add. Great, thank you. I, 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 I would like to speak at some point, but I'd rather to have women and other underrepresented people talk first. I, I don't want to have us all be white males talking. No one else is jumping up, Peter, so I'd say jump on board. Okay. Um, I, what I'd, I'd like to just uh, make a couple of observations. Um, this is about high school. Uh, in the uh, early 1970s, um, I was a uh, chemistry teacher in Springfield, Vermont, and um, we got slammed that year 
by uh, uh, drugs pouring into the area because of the Rockefeller drug laws in New York State, just moved over into Vermont, and suddenly there were all kinds of drugs available. It was also a time when sexuality um, was uh, um, even more at the forefront for adolescents than ever, <laughs> um, partially because um, uh, access to abortion was um, uh, beginning to be legal. And uh, the school was caught completely unprepared. And I, I, I noted with interest earlier this year before, well, before COVID, I believe, that there was beginning to be some talk about um, sexuality education at the high school and, and may, maybe at the middle school as well. I, I, I can't quite recall. Um, and in any case, I was tapped to uh, um, provide both sex education and drug education courses and to be available um, as a counselor um, in both of those areas. And which, believe me, I did very little chemistry teaching that year um, because of the, of the incredible, not just the need, but the lack of resources that had been uh, applied to that, partially because faculty and even guidance counselors were uncomfortable with both of these um, uh, uh, topics. And I, I just think that this is one of those same kind of moments. And I hope that whatever is done with respect to the uh, resource officer, that there will be um, people who have uh, counseling abilities and who are comfortable in talking to young people, with young people, either in uh, group, small group settings or individually um, about issues of sexuality and also uh, drug use uh, and, and abuse. That, that's what I, just my, my input on that. Thank you. So we have a couple of new people who have joined us. So I just wanted to reiterate to our new community members, and I see a teacher as well um, has joined us around. It's just because of the small amount of people from the community on the on the call. It's just an open ended. Um, what you'd like to see uh, the board consider, the board and the administration consider, as we're putting together our budget um, for the 2020 uh, fiscal year. So if, if for our new people who've joined on, feel free to, to jump, unmute yourself and jump into the conversation. Did I mute myself? Am I muted? I hear you, Alice. Unmuted, Alice. Just introduce yourself before you start talking, okay? Okay. Hi, my name is Alice, and I'm, a, I'm one of the school crossing guards at Union Elementary School. And um, I was, I was um, talking to Julia, one of the parents, and she said that I should come on the meeting because it was, I was saying to her about the budget, you know, at, they were talking about all the people in the school. And I said, and I said to her, what about, what about the crossing guards for the budget? Because we're the ones that keep the children safe that get the children safe to and from school. And I think that's a very big thing for the budget for the crossing guards, because I take very good care of my, all the kids that I cross. You sure do. Thank yes. you, Alice. Yes, you do. Thank There's you. no mention, our crossing guards are pretty safe in our budget. <laughs> that's a, that's yes. a needed feature in the city of Montpelier, not one that you should be worried about. Okay, but I wanted to understand what do they mean by the budget? Good question. So every year um, we go through all the pieces of the budget from um, every single line item. So Grant, the uh, business manager, myself, and all of our principals go through every single line, every single staffing line, every expense line, um, we look at the actuals from the year before and what we had budgeted for, where did we go over, where did we go under, um, and look to put numbers together to present to the board. Um, so something like crossing guards are in our budget every single year as a line item. 
Um, and really it, ju it just kind of passes on, that kind of thing passes on from one to the next, one year to the next. Um, but every year the board's responsibility is to gather community input um, and take the recommendations from the administration to put together a responsible budget for our community to, to vote on. Does that answer? And another question I also had, what last year the school was, was paying me, paying the cross and gods and all the, um, all the hourly employees because of the COVID. And she's, I wanted to see if that still would stay the same. That's our plan, yeah. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you, that was my question. No problem, Alice. I knew there, I knew that was in there somewhere. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, Kelly, Kelly, who else is on here that I see? Kelly Murphy, or I don't want to call anybody out if they don't want to speak. That's absolutely fine. Rebecca Delorio, one of our fabulous teachers. If anybody else wants to jump in and, and uh, give the board any uh, conversational points to think about, please do so. Hi, um, I'm Rebecca I Deloro. I know I could get you out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a teacher at the middle school. And um, I'm actually really just here representing uh, some of our, our teachers union to just sort of hear what the community um, is hoping to share with the board so that we can sort of, um, you know, have our knowledge in there as well. So that is why I'm here. Thank you, Rebecca. So I could, Jill, I could ask some questions too. Um, so I'm curious when, when people say diversity, equity, and inclusion, that often means different things to different people, um, depending on where people's, um, I don't know if priority is the right word, but where their vision and passion lies. Um, so I'm curious from the group who are here, um, if you, if you did, did indeed take that su survey, or if, even if you didn't, um, help me get a sense of what that means to you of social emotional wellness and Chad you spoke I don't want to call you out but you spoke about social emotional wellness you're going to have a kiddo in our school hopefully for the next I don't know 12 years <laughs> um, and so if we were to do a top-notch job with your child you know as a senior 12 years from now around social emotional wellness or diversity equity and inclusion what, what's that image for you and I don't mean to pick on Chad. Anybody could answer that. <laughs> Even board members, you could answer that too. If others want to jump in first, but yeah, I, I'm happy, happy to answer. Hearing none. Um, <laughs> sure, uh, it's a great question. I think for me and for our family, I think having my kiddo be able to navigate a very different world than what we know now is going to be of the utmost importance. I want her to be able to, to um, walk in and out of any situation and feel comfortable and treat people well. And um, that's the tall order for our district because our world's going to look a lot different in 12 years. Um, so I would say in the social emotional realm, that's that's kind of what I'm looking for. I think diversity, equity, and inclusion, um, in terms of the role of the school board, I would want to see an investment in ongoing uh, training, professional development for staff. Um, staff gets paid to do that, um, so it wouldn't just be on folks' own time. That would be part of our annual budget. Um, I would want to see... Um, essentially kind of a community of learning around that, uh, family engagement, uh, community engagement in that process. Um, and I, th I think we'll be able to kind of learn what is needed as, as years go by. And I think as we're seeing right now, I think since June, things have changed so dramatically. And I think uh, not just having a splash on our website or 
um, kind of a, a front uh, front facing um, approach, but also a three dimensional where we're actually committed to hiring a diverse uh, uh, workforce um, and that uh, we're committed to that from top to bottom, right and left. So I think, um, you know, I could go into a lot more greater detail, but I'm, that's kind of broadly what I, I would look for as a parent. Thanks, Chad, I appreciate that. Board members, that's open to you all too, as community members. Well, just to pile on here. <laughs> Um, I think that um, this year's pandemic and the last four years of um, the Trump presidency uh, have made crystal clear that there need to be discussions and a much greater understanding on the part of uh, all Americans. And I would start with young people because seems like we have a, had a whole generation that missed the boat on some pretty important issues. Um, we really need to take a look at the way in which we teach history. Um, just even the Electoral College, which is, is talked about as if it were just a, a, a political uh, entity, when in fact it, 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 it's deeply embedded in the history of racism in this country and slavery. It's, we, we just need to have kids learn uh, from a very early age about the realities of the founding of this country, of taking away land from Native Americans, building an economy on the backs of African slaves, uh, disenfranchising people who didn't have or never enfranchising people who didn't own property until it was forced upon them. Um, but um, have, having a, a country which was basically designed for the wealthy to succeed and for the um, working class to be there, if not their slaves, then, then their, their poorly paid uh, servants. These kinds of things are mis had been mistaught in American schools uh, for a long time. There was a, there was a break when I broke into teaching uh, in the uh, uh, mid 60s, there was a moment in time for about during the Vietnam War when 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 we did uh, take seriously reteach reteaching the truth and Howard Zinn and, um, and and others, you know, helped helped us to learn things that we were never taught as teachers. Um, even as a chemistry teacher, I taught about the relationship between uh, science and warfare and uh, DNA was just beginning to be used. And we brought in people who were in doing that research and my students grilled them on what would happen if DNA was misused the way uh, nuclear power was. And I think we've got to get back to that kind of dealing with really uh, tough issues and not, not in a, um, a, a politically correct way, but in a factual way. We've got to look at the facts of our history and be able to discuss them. And if people have political differences and, and, and disbelieve some of those things, send them to the to you know to do the research, find out what what the what what the electoral college really has done over the, over the history of this country. So I would like to see a reconsideration. It's not just having an ethnic studies curriculum, which I think we should have, but going back into what we do teach, whether it's chemistry or math or um, or, uh, or social studies or English. W why have we been teaching this canon of white male authors all these years? Now I know the, 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 we, we have a broader range of books that are being taught now, but let's look at why we were taught all those white male authors all the time. Why is it that people don't know about women authors you know, from uh, throughout, throughout history, important women authors? Thank you. Uh, 
Um, I'll answer your question, Libby. Um, thanks for asking it. I think it's a really uh, good way to approach um, these topics. And for me, um, they kind of go hand in hand, social emotional learning and diversity, equity and inclusion, um, because I think um, when they are combined well, we have kids who, uh, when graduating and, and leaving our community or staying in our community, are justice oriented, um, meaning that they understand, and I think particularly about my own kids who are white, they understand that they have, hold a lot of privilege and they have an understanding of how to um, how to use it and how also to make space for other people. Um, and, uh, and I think that it requires a very dedicated social emotional learning um, in order for them to be able to, to do that and um, and and lenses of diversity and equity and inclusion in their learning in order to be able to have the, the facts as Peter was just saying that um, that give them a knowledge base that give them confidence and um, and then that combined with with strong social emotional learning, make them see that other people are um, just as worthy as they are and that they should be taking steps to decenter themselves and and make space for others. Hi Libby, I'll weigh in. So uh, very much support what everyone else said and I guess I, I work in technology um, and I think the other part of that that we don't often discuss or see is there are people, AI is coming, automation is coming, there's no way to stop it. And we need good people who know science, good people who are coding those things, good people who are involved in those discussions. Because if you don't have the people who do have a sense of justice in these areas, in these fields, um, you know, you will not have any input into what is certainly going to be part of our future. So that is, I really um, would like to see some, uh, some more uh, effort or um, Did we lose your chair? I think Jerry. I think we froze. I think she froze. Shoot. She looks very thoughtful and pensive though in her <laughs> frozen mind. <laughs> I'm sure it's gonna be great. Yeah, sorry, I don't know if I cut out there for a minute, but <laughs> but you look very thoughtful when you did, Jerry. <laughs> yeah, so just uh something to keep in mind. I mean, Vermont overall, sometimes, you know, we're, we're very rural and we can get a little disconnected from these things. And uh, so if we could keep this, uh, maybe the students are very much involved in, in that, but um, it's something they should be thinking about for their own futures. Anyone else want to add anything into to anything um, considering budget and uh, priorities? If not, we can give the uh, board members a chance to run to the facilities. And <laughs> I have a question I wanted to ask you. Oh, go ahead, Alice. Okay. Um, I have, I'm a school crossing guard and I wanted to know is because when I unionized the school crossing guards, 
How does how does that how can that happen? Um, how can unionization happen? Yeah. I honestly don't like know. If we don't we don't get no health benefits or nothing. And we're out there. I don't know the I don't know the answer about um crossing guards and, and how you start a union. Grant might know that. Or how can we go about getting getting some like we can't in this state, because I was a school crossing guard in New York City in the Bronx. We were able to collect unemployment. In this state, we can't collect unemployment and we're off for the summer. We don't even get paid. We don't get paid for the summer. Right. And I thought maybe that's a good question to bring up. Yeah, I think that's one that you and I can have a conversation with if you just if we set up a time to talk and we can talk with Mark and the other crossing guards as well. Yes. Um, in Montpelier. And uh, I can see if I can find out some information for you around unionization and that kind of thing. At least because I feel we should get we're out in the street. We're taking our lives in our hand. We should get some kind of benefits. Yeah, that's determined by the amount of hours worked under under what we have to go by. So we can talk about that so we can make sure that you're clear about what that uh, is all responsible for. OK, that sounds good. OK. And what's your name? I'm Libby. I'm the superintendent. Libby. I'm technically your boss, okay. but that's okay. <laughs> oh, you, I didn't even know. This is the first time I've ever met you. I think we've met once or twice before. I don't remember ever seeing you. That's okay. All right. So board members, would you like to go use the facilities? I'd like to thank the community members. Jill, since you, you took charge, Jerry started us off. You went in the middle. So you want to finish us up here with uh, closing this part of the meeting and then coming back at 630? Sure. I guess, do we need a motion to adjourn? It was a warned meeting, so probably. OK. Um, I'll move that we adjourn the budget forum um, and thank everyone very much for coming. Um, and as Libby pointed out, there will be more sort of public um, feedback and opportunities for us to inform the community on what, where we end up knowing that we're all, you know, in the midst of a strange time, if ever. Um, but thank you very much for joining us this evening. And there is a regular school board meeting starting at 630 for folks who are interested. Uh, do I have a second? A second. Okay. All those board members in favor of adjournment say aye. 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 Okay. All right, I didn't do roll call, but it seems like we're, we're okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you everybody very much. It looks like Orca was here thank and you. Alcor was here. So this will get some um, attention. And thank you folks yeah. for coming too. Thank Anna. you. Hey Anna. everyone. Thanks everyone. Anna, is there a different link for the board meeting or do we just kind of have to shut off our cameras? It's the same link, yep. So, okay. so we can turn just off your cameras. You can get out and rejoin if you'd like, but I think we should keep it going until Okay. Yeah, I'll just shut off. Do my we camera. need to shut the chat off? Because the chat is working. I mean, it was fine. There was it was innocuous, but I know that for board meetings, it's usually off. Yep. I just turned it off. Okay. Chat disabled. Okay. All right. Thanks, everyone. Right. Thanks, Libby. <laughs>